How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today I've got part two of this uh, Star in the Sky mission where you've got to grab this bloody plane and uh, all the wings and the fuselage and everything and take it back. <laughs> to be fair, this second half hasn't been quite as bad because I was able, as other people have done as well, kind of think outside the box of the mission and kind of do your own thing to help the situation. Uh, yeah, just a quick one when I was driving along the cliff. Made a wrong wrong move and uh, flew off in the Navistar. But yeah, I had to bring a maintenance trailer. I was just running out of fuel. I, I had smashed a few things, which was some were my fault, some were like just ice flying out the ground and then it'd delete half my suspension. So uh, yeah, in the end I decided to bring the Navistar with a maintenance trailer that fortunately, like at the start of the night when I brought a few trucks from like my garage to the airport, I uh, yeah, I brought a maintenance trailer with me. So I didn't have to go all the way back to the garage. And I have to say though, I think this mission is the first and only time I've ever used all the fuel out of the maintenance trailer and like could have done with some more basically. Normally I've got uh, plenty left but I, I did have a lot of trucks that I didn't necessarily need to refuel them all while I was there. Like if it was down to an emergency situation I certainly could have dumped the fuel out of a few other trucks and uh, kept some spare. But yeah just as I was like well, I'll top everything up while I'm here. So anyway, now we're here. As you can see, like a bit like yesterday, I've already got the uh, plane on this trailer. And we're going to, uh, yeah, try and take it back. I'm going on this route. It's the sa It's well, most of the way. It's the same way I just uh, drove here. Obviously, some people have done different ways. I already knew I could have gone like, if you're looking at the map with the lake at the bottom of the map, I could have gone up the left-hand side of the map, but. I'll show you a little bit of like later on that um, that side of the map just has a lot of like super snow and trees in the way to where it's probably the most or it's probably a more logical safer way to go but I don't know it just wasn't really tickling my fancy I just kind of knew I mean a bit like this you're just going to be squeezing the throttle flat out and uh, going really slow through snow and kind of paying more attention to trying to dodge trees than just I was trying to sort of, yeah, try and put my finger on, because the potential of this mission I really do like, I, I think it's really cool the fact that you're actually like recovering a plane that's just gone down or whatever, and uh, yeah, the way it's all packed on the trailer like a unique piece of cargo, I think all that element of it is pretty cool, but I just wanted more chance on this mission to actually drive this trailer above one mile an hour and, you know, through super snow and just wiggling around trees. It'd have been nice to have more sections where you could have built a bit of speed up, kind of. Say, like, if there was a bridge on the way back that you have to, you know, gauge, like, the width of the plane and make sure you don't click it on the bridge. Just little bits and bobs like that. But I also did get bitten by quite a few glitches, which, again, that's where I just think they... Personally, anyway, like, they added a little bit too much faff on top of the mission <laughs> to where yeah I had some trees that were just glitching and like sticking in the trailer that were stopping me towing the trailer um, obviously bits of ice around the lake were kind of as I run over them they punch out the ground and either flick me into the lake or they tip me up or whatever it's just yeah there was little things on top of it where if they had those bugs kind of ironed out it probably wouldn't have been quite as bad although if I'm honest I don't I'm not that keen on the uh the metal detector. It's not horrible or anything, it's just, yeah, it's like, I could just as... I would have been just fine if the plane bits were already discoverable or whatever, and you could just go there and grab them and, uh, yeah, drive back with it. Although, that said, the Voron EE, when I had the metal detector on it, driving here was one of the easier things of the night, so it's not... It added very little hassle to the mission, but again, it was just more faff because then I'd already drove from, say, the airport to here with the Voron AE. Then I drove it again with the Kolob and the trailer. Then I drove it again with Bruce and Tatrin. And it's like, that's already three trips here of the same road, the same thing. Which, yeah, it's not the end of the world. It's just, I think they could have possibly, yeah, say, removed the uh, metal detector situation. And just kind of let you head there with uh, a crane and... 
the trailer. A few people did say, and I appreciate the info, oh, it's too late for me, but if anyone else is watching this that hasn't done this game, uh, some people have been using the P12, that apparently you can have the metal detector on and the saddle high at the same time, which is pretty cool, so... Uh, yeah, if you were trying to do this mission with as few trucks as possible, like someone said to me, try and do it with three trucks. I... Yeah, between all the faffing around on this mission, I didn't even want to attempt it in the end with three. However, if I was going to do this mission again, <laughs> which I have absolutely no desire to do it again, but, yeah, I could see, like, somebody said they are able to do this with two, I think it was two P12s, um, yeah, I could do this with two or three trucks, sort of knowing what I know now, but I still think there's a lot of faffing around, though. So this was the last piece of plain. It's like up in the mountain a little bit. Obviously there's a lake you can see sort of down the hill. Um, yeah, because they don't show up on your game, like you don't have a yellow box on them. Like you can see a little yellow box on my screen now. I believe that's to where the airport is. But yeah, the actual pieces themselves kind of didn't show up unless you look on the map. I think when I scanned, I might have found two pieces at the same time. I'm not 100% on that, or I just missed the sound of the beeping. But yeah, I didn't even realise, I only ever remember hearing two, like, beeps of finding something with a metal detector. So I didn't even realise this was up in the mountains for quite a while. I had it quite a lot out where, yeah, I did another, like, couple of laps of the lake. I drove up around in the mountains and all sorts, and it was, uh, it was only by chance, really, that I kind of noticed it out of the corner of my eye. So I was trying to reverse that iron bloody fell over. <laughs> I could have just sent, I've got the VAR and A down the road, but... Just bordering on principle, I was like, nope, I'm just going to quit game, reload the game, and I'll reload back up just here. However, the game decided to reload me with the, uh, the fuselage and the engine and everything inside me. It's not what I'd really had planned, so that basically smashed my tyre, my suspension, and my fuel. I suppose that's what I get for trying to uh, <laughs> blag the game and restart it. However, that's kind of put me on a bit of a time limit now to get this thing out of here and back. And Bruce, to its credit, has been doing bloody well on this uh, mission, so it helped, helped and made the best. Of, I wouldn't say it's a bad mission, it's just, it, well, it sort of is, it's just tedious. Like, yeah, they there wasn't enough time for fun <laughs> in this mission, especially when it never really occurred to me until I was already here. I'd already figured it out by now, but... Once I put the plane on the trailer, and it just kind of dawned on me, like, what? So have I got to bring this trailer back two more times to grab this wing and so on? And I had a feeling as well that this wing and the other wing would fit on a smaller trailer than just this big flatbed. Uh, they make you bring that, you know, like, special wide body flatbed or whatever it's called, uh, for the plane, the main body of the plane, really. But these, apparently, you can get away with smaller trailers. However, I'm not even bothering doing that. Can you see that? I left this bit in just to sort of show... Considering how much it's bouncing around on the crane. Obviously, the crane's pretty high in the air as well. I'm going down a hill. I'm tipping pretty far to the left. Like, if I even had a loaf hanging off the crane now, I'd pretty guaranteed would have rolled there. But that just shows you that there's effectively no weight whatsoever in it. But yeah, it was a little bit of a uh, effort. To be fair though, that little section of the mission, I am cool with that. That's the sort of little challenging bits that uh, were nice. Like obviously there was a route up there I was able to get through. When I actually grabbed the wing, there was a couple of trees blocking like a short, shorter way back to the lake, which again is a little bit like, eh. It'd have been cool if they were trees you could knock over, because then I can, yeah, take my risk, make my choice. Do I want to smash my way through the trees, or shall I, uh, yeah, <laughs> try, try and be more, more realistic and go round? Well, I say with realism. I mean, in real life, I'd have a chainsaw, and there would be no trees left. <laughs> I'd have a nice big bonfire, and there'd just be treeless maps as far as the eye could see, and drive wherever I bloody wanted. Starting my own forest fires on this game if I could. The one nice thing about Bruce, considering he's uh, not small, because it's got the rear steer, I really do like trucks. Yeah, there's they could do that, and a few more big trucks would be nice. But a truck 
with their rear stair. You see though what I mean with the ice? Like that wasn't anything I could really help. <laughs> it just decided to fire itself out the ground while I'm on top of it and almost took me into the lake. I'm pretty surprised it didn't really but I got away with it. I mean to be fair in some ways I suppose one break as such they did give us is it's not completely insane around the edge of the lake. There is actually like a relatively flat piece of ground that you can uh, drive along. But I suppose that's really what I'm trying to get at. Like I enjoy difficulty in this game. I enjoy all the different terrains and whatever. But a lot of this just went to the point where holding the throttle down and going half a mile an hour through snow isn't challenging to me or... If all I have to do is just keep resorting to the winch, it's not a challenge and I don't want to just winch my way across the map. Like, the winch is nice when you're getting yourself into a bit of trouble and you kind of laugh and think, oh, alright, I, I fucked it up a bit, I tipped over a bit far or I've got myself in a bit of an awkward situation, I didn't drop out of high gear quick enough and I've dug myself in the ground, sod it, I'll throw a winch out and I'll, uh, yeah, get myself out of that little section then I'll carry on fighting the terrain, whereas a lot of it on this map and bearing in mind I've only took the plane <laughs> I didn't bring the trailer back two more times which some people I bet have mad lads good for them I mean I respect it don't get me wrong if you've uh, if you've gone all out on this mission then yeah fair play <laughs> but I just I don't know because I, like I said I'd already done three trips here with the trailers and Bruce and the Voron in it etc and then doing this trip back to the airport it's like before I've even done it, it's put me off the idea of doing it two more times. I suppose like I kind of said to someone, which kind of helps explain what I was meaning, is you know when you do a mission sometimes, and you know that mission is going to take you, say, two to four hours, that obviously doesn't include you might get a little bit distracted and think, oh, I'll go and have a look up here quickly while I'm there. Um, like, for one, that this map takes that part away from it. Like if I just wanted to go oh, I'll just explore over in that mountain it's going to take me 10 minutes just to climb over all the rocks and go through the super slow snow and whatever. So there's that part of it but other missions even if I know they're going to take me hours I don't necessarily know what I'm going to be doing in an hour or two whereas this mission I could already see by look like before now when I'm driving this slow then in super snow I know the game expects me then <laughs> to drop this plane off and then drive all the way back, grab a wing, drive all the way back, drop that off, come all the way back again and it's just like, well, you've put me off before I've even started because that just sounds and feels and yeah, imagines in my head like that's just not my idea of a uh, varied night. This bit, however, like it's definitely a fine line, but I actually quite like the fact that that gap was makeable if I paid attention, which I did, and I made the gap. Like it didn't make it a complete, <laughs> complete asshole where it's like, yep, you're not getting through. You're just gonna have to go and bring a crane or do something like other people have said, which is a good tip. And again, I appreciate it. If I unpacked the plane now, then apparently it would like just you know glitch through trees or whatever instead of getting caught on trees it just glitched through it also wouldn't be packed solidly on the trailer so it could fall off see that's a separate thing to this mission but other people have said and I've said the same with the trees the way I just winch to like five or six trees that just instantly pop out the ground it's like why even waste my time <laughs> offering me those trees they serve no purpose whatsoever. Like, the loaf, to be fair, the loaf weighs so little that usually can get at least some purchase on some of them smaller trees. But for big trucks like this, it's kind of like, yeah, I'd rather you just don't even offer me the inevitability that I'm just going to pull some little tree out of the ground, which, yeah, I need that tree. <laughs> the tree that gets me moving. So I couldn't really try and go down the little gap going down there because that uh, engine sticking out to the left I was probably not going to have a good time with it. And to be fair, mostly 
this collab wasn't too bad. But there is obviously plenty of other choices. Some people said like the Tiger would be a good one, uh, the Voron Grad, the Navistar. Um, trying to think. Well, I suppose all them sorts of things like medium-sized trucks, but as well like some other people, I like to kind of rotate my trucks and uh, yeah, try and use as many different trucks as I can because I could easily fall into a pattern of just use like the same solid truck. Again, the Tager is like Tager's good for like multi-purpose. It's very good at a lot of different things. So, but yeah, I just I don't want to use it over and over and over again. See, going along here though, I mean it's not too bad. This section was actually pretty nice. I just still, yeah, I'd like to have a section where I was actually building up a bit of speed, whether it's on a proper road or just somewhere that's not plastered in snow. I suppose someone made a pretty good point in the comments that other maps that we, you know, end up going on on this game, once you've scouted it, there's certain missions you can do to you know, rebuild bridges and unblock roads and clear routes and stuff like that. This game, uh, this uh, map, sorry, doesn't necessarily have that. See, this one tree here is movable, and I knew I was able to kill it, and that little section I was like, oh, thank God, so I didn't have to bring the crane and everything. However, yeah, go forward a little bit and I'm snagged. Yeah, there is a few places where you can clear the road on this game, but it doesn't really, that mission I did the other day, Magnitude of Five, the bit where I cleared the road is less useful than just cutting across the lake anyway. And there is another bit on this map where you can clear the road, but it's down such an awkward narrow path with rocks and trees either side that I was like, there, hell no, <laughs> there is no way I'm even attempting to take the plane down that road, uh, route or road. So, yeah, that was kind of a... Uh, I've not cleared that road either, it's probably around near the middle of the map, but yeah, I just don't need to because it's such a crazy route that it's not going to benefit me a lot anyway. So as you can see, the wing, the left hand side of the rear wing is hooked over that tree that's an immovable tree. So I brought the uh, tattering down, trying to kind of use both of them together to see if I could either bend that tree or just push hard enough that it'd go through. <laughs> that's what she said. But uh, yeah, I was having none of it. Somebody said in the comments, obviously, yeah, you can, uh, like, unpack the plane and it'll go through. Someone else said the tail of the plane doesn't go through trees, so I'm not sure myself. This was uh, yesterday when I was doing this. I finished the rest of the mission off tonight, though. Yeah, I was completely stuck. And I was also running low on fuel. <laughs> Drove down there, clipped a rock, completely deleted half my... Uh, truck. Although that wasn't the issue, I wasn't bothered about that. But I just left this in to show you like the extra tediness, tediousness <laughs> of this mission. Like, look at this snow. And I know I've got broken suspension. It's irrelevant. So if, you, if I went to the right now a bit, that's basically that cliff edge that I drove along. And look, when I got here, the Tatrim was already glitched through the trailer. My trailer then flicked into the air. The plane starts taking off. To, I was like, well, good, at least you're heading in the right direction. <laughs> I won't be as mad because it was kind of technically heading closer to the airport. But yeah, that was like, I don't know how or why that happened. I've never really had that issue before with trucks doing that. Maybe it's since they've released like the physics doesn't lock in place anymore. So maybe the Tatrin just rolled down the hill while I wasn't there and kind of morphed into the trailer. But yeah, either way, the trailer flew in the air, flung the uh, plane sort of more towards the beach. The Tatrin's now wedged under the trailer. I'm now taking damage. Just, and I edited a lot of random glitches and things like this that happened to me yesterday. Otherwise the video would have been about an hour long and I still would have only effectively drove there and that's about it so I did edit quite a few trollish things out of yesterday's video but this was the sort of stuff that was happening well this one in particular with the trailer flying up and the plane flying off was probably one of the more fun entertaining ones and as it happened to get me over that tree I was stuck on it was kind of like okay <laughs> I'll take it it's a fair trade 
But yeah, my trailer's landed where I've now got a tree each side and there's not a whole lot I can do. And now, as you can see, as I've been trying to pull it round a bit, now that rear tree is stuck inside my trailer. And, uh, yeah, when you've already been on the mission for hours, this is just where you're like, oh my god, <laughs> please, please just let me get the goddamn trailer. Like, that's probably one of my biggest issues, so to speak. I mean, relatively speaking, like, I still enjoy the game, but this mission is a twat. <laughs> um, I, yep, I stand firm on that one, but... Like, yeah, if the trees are going to keep glitching in the trailer, then stop putting trees everywhere. Like, yeah. <laughs> get get your trees smoothed out before you keep putting them in my way. And, like, artificially holding me back in a way that trees won't do in real life. Like I said, in real life, I'd blow that son of a bitch out the ground. It just wouldn't exist anymore. It would no longer be a tree. Fortunately, after a bit of tugging, <laughs> works every time, um, yeah, got my way out of there. Somehow the tree let go of me. So then there's a separate like, little thing. I was bringing these two along. They're actually uh, doing pretty nice in this section of snow and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I could have chose a better option. I could have brought, like, again, the Tag of the Voron Grab Dolphin or something and uh, put a maintenance trailer on it. But I just, again, to vary my trucks and that, I fancied uh, driving these two as a pair. And uh, yeah, with both van bodies on, there's a thousand repair points. I've also got the roof rack on uh, Taz. Obviously, because the Warthog is like a crew cab, not like just a single cab. Um, when you put the van body on, it like you can't have the roof rack on the roof as well, which is a little bit, yeah, <laughs> a little bit too much attention to detail. But uh, whatever, I'm not too fussed. This is effectively a route I could have brought the plane, but I've already driven this route before and I already knew like pretty much what it was like. And if I had brought the plane this way, I don't know, as you can see, it's like it's very boggy, there's a lot of trees in the way. I just already had a feeling before I came this way that I'd just be holding the throttle down a lot. And yeah, doing this. And to me, this little section we're looking at right now is like there's no challenge to what I'm doing. Right now, I'm, I was probably looking at my phone while I'm squeezing the trigger down. And I'm just like, yeah, eventually I'll be uh, another 10 feet ahead. <laughs> but we'll just twiddle our thumbs until then. And again, it is a fine line between, like, that and... I don't know. They're just... Some of the other missions feel like you're wrestling around, you've got to be looking where you're turning, and, you, you know, you're trying to judge your line or whatever. This map's gone sort of so far with slowing you down that... Yeah, it's slow to the point where you just think, well, I'm not even going to be, I'm not even going to be 50 foot ahead of myself in a minute because I'm just going to watch myself wheel spin and go incredibly slowly. That's why, to be honest, driving around the lake was actually not that bad. I wasn't even that bothered that I ended up doing a couple of laps of the lake trying to look for that third piece of plane because, yeah, <laughs> overall, like, going around the lake was actually a nice little pace to it. And a nice view, nice scenery and all that. So like I said, effectively what I did, I'm already on my way back with the uh, truck, but I stockpiled... You can see the wing's already on Bruce's head, and I'm now lowering like the wing with the engine on it as well, onto Bruce. And then I'm kind of sandwiching the crane down on top of them. And this, I suppose, is one reason why, overall, the mission, the second half, wasn't as bad. I ended up having a little bit more fun than I did yesterday because, yeah, I i mean, what a lot of people have done, <laughs> I've done the same, effectively cheated. Well, it's not cheated, it's common sense, it's more than common sense, it's thinking outside the box. Do you think if I was in the middle of the arse end of Antarctica or C Kola Peninsula or wherever I am, if no one else was looking and I had a bloody plane wing that they said don't dent, getting it back to the airport, but it's already very dented. But I'm not going to risk putting another dent in it just to drive it back like this. Like, hell no, nah, I ain't got time to go and bring a trailer. No one's looking. I'll kick it. <laughs> I'll kick it back to the airport. At least that time, that thing, like, super snow patch actually looked 
like I went pretty deep. <laughs> like that actually still was bordering on realism, so I could live with that a bit more. I believe at this point, by the way, obviously I had the warthog and the uh, and Taz. I kind of repaired everything around me. Ended up using all the repair points from uh, the warthog. Moved any fuel, everything else between these trucks and over to the uh, Taz. So my repair trailer and the roof rack has still got full points. And the warthog is now. I've I left it at the beach, but I essentially recovered it later on. Like that's already done its job now. It's yeah, got no repair points, no fuel, no nothing. Bruce looking pretty good. See? That's how you do this mission. You just gotta wing it. <laughs> Trust me, I can make worse jokes than that. I ain't seen nothing yet. Looking around, I've got dame, <laughs> I've got a bed. Super wanks time. Uh, yep, got plenty of time. <laughs> we'll be over at the horizon in about another hour. And yeah, Bruce is a pretty nice truck to drive on this map, out of most things. I just think, I suppose it was a bit like what I said when I did the uh, Imandra, I don't know, the first exploration of the map. I like the fact that this map is difficult in some ways, but I only like it in doses, like because they've gone so far with it. Um, yeah, there's times tonight that like, after doing this mission, I just, uh, what map did I go to? I think I went to Black River. And I was just racing around with like the Warthog and a few other trucks. Just enjoying, yeah, <laughs> the freedom. The freedom to get out of first gear. It's looking a bit wide. I'm just going to take the same little uh, shortcut. Not really a shortcut, but I thought if I go down that little canyon, I'm only going to probably knock the wings off the top of Bruce. And have to restack them, so yeah. Thankfully, because they're not packed or anything, the engine side of the uh, wing just went through that tree. I believe it almost went, looked like it was going to tip, but we're all good. See, like for this little section though, heading like with these back towards the airport, it felt better because I felt like not like I was cheating the game or anything, but yeah, I don't know. It was kind of like I'm ahead of the game, I'm ahead of where it wants me to be, and I, I'm ahead of where I sh thought I was probably going to have to be. If I just dragged another flatbed all the way back there to then just stick, especially that little shitty wing on the bottom, like. That'd depress me if I just dragged the flatbed all the way back there for that. That barely even deserves a two slot. Well, at this point, I've not even got the plane back to the airport yet. That's why I'm bringing Bruce along, obviously, because the uh, plane <laughs> flew off the trailer. I mean, good news is, she still runs, obviously, because took off pretty well. Oh, game. Why'd you do it to me? To be fair, it doesn't take long to restack them, but obviously I did sit out because this video is already long enough. can hear another helicopter in the air. Where were you? Where were you, helicopter, when I needed you? See? Silence. <laughs> Fuck you, helicopter. I'm going down there. I think there's a big dent in the map, like where I am now, yeah. I think where the tattering and the club and everything kind of came together as one. So there's my plane in the trees, that's where it ended up, which, relatively speaking, I mean, it could have been a serious dick and uh, just flew it into the middle of that lake or something. So all things considered, I kind of got lucky. This bit here, I'm just showing you what the different cargoes look like packed on the trailer. Once you pack it, it rotates this one round so the engine's like nearer to the front of the trailer basically. 
Yeah, that one's got a little bit of wood in that, propping it up. Little uh, ratchet strap thing over the top of it. Next one, I think, yeah, this is like, yeah. This is the boring one. <laughs> Just a little end section of wing. I mean, I'm not sure that one might even just be a two slot. And then of course, the, again, this is like a cool piece of cargo. I wish I could have this piece of cargo, this plane, on at least another region. Like, I don't know, Michigan would be pretty cool. Russia wouldn't be too bad, but it's still a little bit... Yeah, just be a... Uh, I don't know, you can mix it up in Michigan, there's still some awkward places getting across the Black River crossing and stuff. Or going to where like the oil uh, drill rig site thing is. <laughs> where you end up on the food, the food contest, food delivery or something. But yeah, I mean this looks really cool with the plane on it. I do like how it's all, you know, got wood propping it up and yeah, they've strapped it down and put sort of scaffolding under one of the wings to hold it up a bit. It's just, if you actually think of it by this point, I had a little section for a few minutes where I was able to drive without hitting any trees or anything, but considering how many hours were actually put into this mission, how, like, you don't get a lot of uninterrupted plane hauling time. Well, not as much as I was hoping for. And particularly with this map, I appreciate, you know, chainsaws and demolition teams blowing fucking rocks out of the way. <laughs> it's probably a bit over the top, but yeah, a snow plough or a rock plough, whatever, some type of plough so you could uh, push some of these rocks and stuff out of the way would not only be pretty cool, but it's bordering on needed in this game. And not just needed, but if I then, again, that opens up the options, I can either do I, you know, send in the, the snow plough and carve my way a nice neater road so then the collob can just fly through there with no issues or do I not waste time preparing the way and uh, rough it out I mean of course Loaf's got damn horse of a vehicle he's sitting on them wings he's keeping them packed he's a strategic weight Loaf I mean, yeah, as nice as the uh, Kolob is, it's got pretty decent power and everything. One thing it really, 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 really doesn't like is rocks all over the place because the chassis in the middle sits pretty goddamn low. And it's got no raised suspension or anything either. Fortunately, I mean, tattering has been pretty useful on this mission. Even though I do wish it steering was a bit, <laughs> a bit quicker, but it is what it is. See, right now I'm trying to turn left. And because I keep hooking these rocks, it keeps making me go right. Yeah, I mean, that's a cool looking, uh, cool looking view with the old club and the trailer and the plane. In the end, after scooting along the beach, every 10 foot having to uh, jump back in the Tatran and tow it along a little further. I decided to cut across in the water. There is still some rocks in the water. They've, uh, they've made sure to ruin that route as well. <laughs> so just bear that in mind. There must be like a little ledge here or something because now yeah when I'm turning right and uh, I don't know I'm scraping along something but I'm not even moving. Not even attempting. We're getting closer. What the way I came last time is basically where all my trucks are. I kind of cut straight across from the airport through the trees. I didn't even want to take this through the trees. It wasn't even the tail section that was worrying me. It was if I get another bloody tree glitched into the trailer, and if it tried throwing my trailer up in the air or going mad in some way. So even then, with the Tatran, I was turning with a Tatram from like probably halfway down the uh, length of that trailer. There mu again, there must be like a little ledge there that hooks your wheels in because it was uh, just trying to make me drive straight forward.
Yeah, even the Tatrin was feeling these rocks. To be fair, the Tatrin suffers a little bit on these rocks. Not bad, and it's certainly got a hell of a lot of pulling power. Like, that's one reason I do like the Tatrin. But yeah, it, c it can get... Uh, I can't remember what the word is. Not high-sided, but... Caught up, it can sit on rocks because it's got a, like a very solid chassis underneath. It's just a pure plate, really. It's like once there's a rock under there, it's not dipping up into the chassis or the suspension. You kind of balance over it. It's just yeah, you sit on top of it. But as I've said, the Tatrin to me makes more sense on this kind of map because I don't have time to worry about the lack of top speed on this thing. You spend most of your time yeah, doing this sort of thing. And I'm guessing this is a route quite a few people have took. Some people were mentioning the beach and that, so I'm going to kind of go out on a limb and assume they cut round this way, which if so, I mean, as far as I can tell, it's uh, a pretty decent way. Obviously, when I went on the way, uh, when I went across the cliffs, as <laughs> some people have said, which is true, they were like, oh, you don't need to go the cliffs way. I agree, but especially yesterday, one of the most fun parts I had of the entire night was cutting across that cliff. I knew it was a bad idea when I went with the uh, Colob and the Wide trailer. I said it on the night I was exploring Imandra that, as and when, I'll, uh, I'll bring, yeah, like, this setup, basically, and attempt it across the cliffs. And last night... The opportunity presented itself, that was my way to cut across to it. And uh, yeah, I knew it was... I knew I was risking it before I even set off. But that's why I kind of had that thing in mind where if I did fall off, I'll just quickly save the footage, kind of turn the game off, reload it, and it'll give me another chance. See, this bit's not the end of the world, because I probably could have gone a bit wider. But that one tree that is unbreakable... I've now got a hope I can scoot the trailer around to the side just to get around it. Whereas I'd much rather just drive at it flat out with a Navistar or something and break it out of the way. It's a perfectly natural thing to do. Fortunately, the trailer actually does scoot around pretty nicely, all things considered, considering it's a bit of a fat, heavy, lumbering trailer, but yeah, it did alright. So we got out of the way of that. Got a nice sound to it, the clobbers. Yep, so we, uh, we gain another five feet <laughs> before there's more trouble. Partly on me this time, I've wedged a tattering under the plane. But still, it's like really plain. I mean, could you imagine if they gave me this mission? Like I said before, Mr. Lone Wolf delivers, like, I'll get there. I suppose this time it's going to make me get your cargo there, but there's no guarantee that it's going to be in one piece when it does. That's your problem. You get the glue out and you stick that fucker back together. It's like a giant airfix set. I mean, again, I doubt it's going to happen, but it'd be pretty cool if we uh, <laughs> could rebuild that plane and go flying around in it. Or at least a helicopter. Give us a helicopter. Can you imagine flying a helicopter around with a loaf dangling off it. How great that feeling would be. I mean, that's a tampon advert right fucking there. Don't need any of this skydiving or rollerblading bollocks. Dangling off a helicopter with a loaf at a goddamn time of your life and a minor time in a month. Anyway, we uh, yeah got this far. Was going to get the wing caught on that telegraph pole, but. At least, see, there's a nice, nice wide area of operations at the minute, though. I can do, I can get by. Yeah, getting pretty low on fuel with uh, quite a few of the trucks. I think most of them, somehow, I just timed it perfectly, see? Loaf, loaf approved. You planned the situation. Uh, pretty much every truck made it back to the airport with extremely small amounts of fuel to spare. See, like, that is, again, the gap was wide enough I was able to get through. However, I would like to spend some time, yeah, looking forward <laughs> and just driving. 
I wasn't sure. I drove into that shed on purpose. I knew it was a long shot, but I just thought there's a tiny chance it might break or move out of the way. So another breakable tree there. That's why I wasn't even looking where I was going. That's why I did crash with the air. Uh, Tattering that time, I was eyeballing that tree. I needed enough speed to knock that thing out of the way. See how much better life is with breakable trees? And finally, well, one of three pieces. Like I said, this game off its fucking rocker. Like, it actually thinks I would drop this off and then go back two more times. It's insane. Like, yeah, this is what you need to do. This is what you need to do. Like, maybe they just allowed this much <laughs> freedom in the mission for people who can't afford to, you know, drop kick their TV out the window or something. I was telling my brother the other day that this TV I've got, I bought it years ago. Like, it's just a bog standard 42 inch, like, plasma TV. It cost me 400 quid. It was about eight years ago. I mean, shit, I was like early 20s nearly when I bought this TV. Still going strong, like a goddamn trooper. I was saying to my brother as well, I don't even, like, I just don't touch the telly, don't polish it, no nothing. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. I don't want to break it, I know what'll happen. Squirt a bit of polish on the fucker and it'll die. I ain't having that. We've got another another solid ten years out of this yet. By the time this telly is done, there will be other <laughs> other forms of media available. I've still got my iPhone 4, I bought that in 2011. That's nine years, that's nearly double digits. It's doing well, probably could do with a new battery, but apart from that, all things considered, it's going pretty good. I've got an iPhone 7 as well, an iPhone 7 Plus, which is a good few years old. The only reason I got that was uh, because the iPhone 4 <laughs> was so old that every time I tried to update an app, it'd say, no, you need whatever software update, but then I couldn't do the software update because the phone was just too old. So in the end, I was like, sod it, just, yeah, it's time for another one. But again, I better see a good five or ten years out of this. And into that uh, swapping my phone every year or whatever. And good luck to people that do. Whatever you spend your money on is your business, but... I've not had many phones in my life. I got a Nokia 3310 when I was about 11. Or 10. Had Snake on it. That was the boy. Uh, I had some other phone that... Used to have like a Kinder Egg case that went over it. It was supposed to be a rubberized, watery, water-resistant phone, but... Yeah. In fact, that died. I dropped it in the toilet when I was about 18 talking to my mate. Last thing you ever heard was me pissing on my own phone because I was mid piss. There's no way I was stopping at that point. Phone had to take a hit, <laughs> to take one for the team. A Nokia 3310s, built like a loaf. That thing was. That's what I need on this game. Throw a Nokia at one of them trees. Not on nail it. So yeah, I mean. Save yourself the hassle of dragging that crappy trailer or any other trailer, really. <laughs> unless you really want to, unless you're into uh, that kind of thing. I was thinking, does this load? It reminds me of Hitler. I don't know why. But it does. Got like Adelaide Hitlov. It's got like a little little moustache on the go. I mean, look at him. Trying to bring the loaf to offer back. <laughs> yeah. No regrets. I'll fight everyone in the comments section over that joke. It's the kind of joke that you. <laughs> you just go and sleep and you're like, yeah, leaf dropper. What a dick. <laughs> That's what she said. Yep, got wing, got plane, got loaf. I mean, look at it. Loaf's on the bloody trailer. What a goddamn professional. So I ended up just stacking everything on the trailer. I can't really remember why, if I'm honest. Put a loaf on there. A loaf. <laughs> a loaf. Strategic weight loaf. So, this little section, this little couple of minutes, is what I wish I was able to see hours and hours and hours earlier, but this is a tiny little bit of actually just driving around, towing a plane. No super snow, no trees hooking on my trailer every two seconds. I think the loaf fell off, <laughs> and one of the wings fell off. See? A fucky trailer. I'm having the time of my life. 
ain't got time for that. There's a tree, avoid that. Yeah, just a nice little cruise. Nice little cruise around the airport. Pretty nice turning on the club, really, once it starts going, considering it's a bit of a monster. And it's just to uh, <laughs> nudge the trailer back over to the edge. Jesus Christ, look at the asshole on that trailer. It's like, like my cat or something with its tail up. See? <laughs> Love them. See how enjoyable this is? I can look where I'm going. I'm in a higher gear than first. Things are going well. There's the wing, I realise now. That was gone. I was like, sod it, I'm going for another lap. Why not? Treat myself. I've earned it. <laughs> I wouldn't say. The horn's alright, it just doesn't really suit a big monster like this. This thing should have like a cargo ship horn. The P16. P16 is a beast of a horn. It needs to be. Well, I don't know, I was going to say it needs to be available on other trucks. If it was, it might dampen the magic of the P-16 horn. Yeah, I mean, it's a very cool looking trailer. Uh, not trailer, sorry, like the plane and everything. It'd be pretty cool if there was more missions like this. I suppose, in a way, maybe this is a, a replacement for the uh, special objective trailers. See, when I did that special objective trailers, though, some of them were fun. Like getting the one from Pedro Bay all the way back to Northport or something. It had its tricky moments and its little bits to catch you out, but it wasn't insane. You still got to have some fun driving the actual trailer around. So basically, what I did, because I actually wanted to keep this uh, plane, so I'm going to complete the mission. I've just packed the smallest wing on the uh, trailer. I've now given that away to the mission, so that's now gone permanently. Uh, I've now put the wing with the engine on the trailer and I waited for the game to save and it did so I've now just quickly gave that to the game and I've only got this plane left worst case if I lose that other um, wing with an engine on it I'm not too fussed it's this mainly that I didn't want to lose so I was trying to be pretty quick with it between auto saves uh, yeah stuck the plane on the trailer quickly pack it and then give it to the mission so I can complete the mission and after all that 18 grand I mean yeah <laughs> I could do a few contests and get that as for the uh, XP 1900 or whatever uh, like I've been on level 30 for months so unless they up the levels that is of no use to me but fair enough whatever I mean I'm not bothered about that I'm glad I finally got the mission done but like I said after that I quickly saved the footage reloaded the game I've now got the plane I might just mess around with it later on I'll finish the mission one day <laughs> when I'm in the mood to finish it, but for now I want I want the option to drive around with that thing. But yeah, that's about it for today though. That's that uh, mission finally ticked off the list. And uh, yeah, I hope this helps. I hope you've enjoyed. Thanks for watching, and I'll be back soon.